Hi there, this is a video about handy surveying. When you first open the app it may ask you permission. This is just so the app can read and write to your phone storage to load and save jobs. So when you when you first run the app you'll see that up the top here it says survey one. That's just a default survey. You can press the edit button here, change that survey name to whatever you want. Um, there's a date there field that you can enter a date for the job and also a description field where you can enter whatever you like. Now that information is saved when you save the job. So the normal way you might want to use this app is if you're doing a boundary survey you'll press the survey button. You'll add a point perhaps for the origin point maybe zero zero and then you'll give a bearing and distance to the next point um, so using a compass and some sort of measuring device to the next point. Um, so if it's a bearing of 45, 45 degrees, a direction, distance of 150 meters, for example, you press compute and then it prompts you to store that in the point database, that second point, the computed point. So that's stored the point. Now if you click up here, you'll see there's two points in there. When you select the point, it populates the top. And you can click on this button here, the menu button to plot on a map. So you can see the first point um, bearing a 45 degrees, 150 meters to the second point. So that's the basic way you do a survey. Um, so when you've done the first layer, you can go next reverse and that'll take you what it does is copies the coordinates from the bottom back up to the top and lets you into the next bearing. So now I want to say go um, north, so bearing of zero, uh, 200 metres, compute. Okay, now I want to go maybe west, 230 metres, compute. Okay, now I'll just plot that to see how I'm going. So I've gone north, east, then north, then west. Okay, so the survey page also has an option to compute options to compute the area and perimeter, um, compute misclosure, and can correct the misclosure. So if I load another survey that I've done previously, um, so this is a raw boundary survey. Um, so if we plot that, we'll see that the points didn't quite close when I went one, two, three, four, five, five and one didn't quite close. So if we go back to the survey page, so we see we've got all those points in there now, we can click on the menu and we can compute the misclosure. And it'll tell me that there's a distance of 24.961 metres between the two, the end point and start point. So now I can use the Bowditch method. I can automatically correct the misclosure. Now you may want to save a copy of the raw survey before you do this because this will alter the coordinates to close the survey. So it prompts up a dial, pops up a dialog that says, do you wish to continue to adjust? Yes. And then the misclosure has been, adjustment has been completed. So then when I plot it, I'll see that the first and last points align correctly. So that's how the survey page works. For each point, you can edit the point. So if it's an entered point, like the origin point I entered, you'll just see the easting, northing, elevation, etc. But if it's a derived point, um, so a point that was derived using a bearing distance, you won't be able to edit the easting and northing, but you will be able to uh, edit the bearing and distance down below. So the way the app works by default is that if you modify any points, any derived points will automatically be updated. Now there is an option in the preferences page, um, update derived points, that first checkbox there. Um, that that turns that off, but by default, if you're working with points that are derived from other points, then everything downstream will be updated if you edit the point upstream. Okay, so we'll just go through the user interface here. So at the top um, of the main page, we have the plot button that just plots the graph. Um, we have the points database button, which just lists the points that you've got saved, shows their coordinates. If you click on a point, it will go into that um, edit point dialog that we saw a minute ago. And you can edit the point, obviously. And if you want to delete a point, 
you can hold your finger down and long press on it and then it will prompt you to delete it but I don't want to delete that point from the menu up here you can add a new point manually or you can delete all the points so there's just a couple more options there going along the top line here we've got import so I used that before to import the raw boundary walk that just imports um, the file from your phone storage and we've got the export button that will save um, the job so when you save a job there's actually two files the CSV file contains the points and there's a TXT file that contains the information about the job so going further along we've got preferences so we can change the number of decimal places for each of the uh, types of data that we're showing we can choose a bearing format and by default um, it's using the dd.mmss format which is quite popular in surveying um, but you can use degrees minutes seconds which is the top one or decimal degrees which is the bottom one um, going down here we've got some checkboxes so update drive points I mentioned previously um, the next one is, is just um, haptic feedback is just a vibration when you press the buttons on the calculator um, now show northings before eastings this is um, defaults to being off um, in the US uh, northings are usually shown before eastings in other countries like Australia um, this would normally be off so and this last option down here is just a um, option for the survey page so you don't have to press the um, compute button it just automatically detects when when it's time to compute okay so going along here we've, we've already looked at the job line there where we can select a job and we can add a job um, which um, will let you enter a name and optional description and it defaults to the, the current time and date um, we can edit the job we can delete a job so that will just prompt you to delete the current job okay next line along we've got calculator this is a general purpose calculator tool which you can use to calculate um, what you need to so it's got the basic trig functions up the top there you can press inverse to turn them to arc the inverse um, with sine cos and tan and if you want to copy a value once you've computed it so done some computation just press on the um, display and you can copy or paste so I'll copy that to clipboard maybe I'll use that later okay next button along is a bearings calculator so I can enter couple of different bearings say I want to um, average them so I press the average button or if I want to subtract them subtract button add add button also and then I can um, copy to the clipboard so it's copied that value I can use that later going along here there's the polar to rectangular tool so we can put in a bearing 45 degrees radius of 250 and that will compute so put in different bearing that will compute the x and y the polar um, coordinates and we can go the other way we can compute from um, x and y to angle and radius also optionally you can turn on maths angle which which is a alters the way that the the angle is used so it defaults to bearing angles um, next along we've got the survey page which we went through before so this is uh, continuous traverse page so you can traverse around a boundary quite easily just adding points to the database as you go and next along we've got a traverse page this is a more of a um, <coughs> a manual process so you can you can enter the <coughs> similar to the survey page you can enter some coordinates um, and bearings and the horizontal distance and you can compute the the resultant coordinates you also got options to use a point from the database so if I want to use the you know one of those points I was using before I can just pull that out of the database and put that into here and also I've got the option to store the result in the database as a new point using the plus sign so these um, database and, and add to database buttons are available on most pages <clears throat> so I, also on the traverse page we've got a um, 3d option so in this case if you're doing a 3d traverse you can as well as entering the easting and northing you can also enter elevation instrument height target height and it will um, you can also specify the angle 
as a um, zenith angle or uh, vertical distance. So there's a few different options there, and I'll, I'll compute the elevation that, that results. So inverse page <coughs> next. So that's also got a 2D and a 3D version. So <coughs> excuse me. So in the simplest form, I'll just pull some points out of the database, and <coughs> we'll just compute the distance and bearing between those. So then we can, um, <coughs> excuse me, then we can quite easily um, compute uh, the distance between any of the points using this and the bearing. We can also, with this page, uh, turn on 3D mode, in which case it's uh, kind of the opposite to the traverse page 3D. Further along here, we've got a curve solver. Um, so this curve solver um, uses the parameters shown in this diagram. So if you, you if you know the uh, d, which is the angle, or the r and r, the radius, then you can put the other parameters pretty easily. So if I've got a radius of 100 meters and a delta angle of, say, 45 degrees, I can just enter the values I know, press solve, and it'll compute the other values. Now, if I don't know both those, if I only know one of those, um, for example, I only know arc length, say, 78, um, I can just use those to solve. I can press the clear button if I want to start again. So arc length, let's try 70, solve. So that solves that. Now if you don't want to see the diagram, just turn that off with a checkbox up the top there. So that's the curve solver. Now we've got intersections. There's a whole set of intersections here. So we can do intersections by bearing. So we've got two points. For example, I'll just pull some points out of the database again. And the bearing of a third point is maybe 45 from this one and maybe 55 from this one. Then we can compute the coordinates of the intersection of those two um, rays. And then we can add that to the database if we choose. So the other intersection pages are, are similar. So we've got intersection with when we know the distance to the third point. We've got um, an intersection where we know a bearing from one point and a distance from another point to the third point. And in this case, there's two solutions down the bottom there. And intersection of two lines. So if we've got you know, four points, each point, each two points defining a, a line segment, then we can work out the intersection point using this page. <clears throat> now, um, intersection of perpendicular lines. So we've got a line, we've got a, a point sitting off that line. We can um, work out the point where the perpendicular intersects. So that's the intersections. Um, a few more things here. We've got point scale factor, um, which is another uh, tool for surveying. I won't go into the details of these, but it's available in the, in the help. Um, so then it calculates the combined scale factor, the grid scale factor, and so on. And we've got grid convergence, where we can enter some lat longs and we can compute, no, I'm busy. We can compute the convergence like that. And unit conversions, we can compute the length in meters to feet, for example. So that's just a conversion tool, we can go both ways. And there's other things we can do here. Area, for example, if we want to convert square meters to hectares, uh, 10,000 square meters on hectare. And up the top here, we've got the about box. You click on that, it will show you which version of the app we're running. And also there's some online help. We can go there and it'll bring up some basic online help, including a link to this video. So that's um, the Handy Surveying app. I hope you find it useful, and if you have any feedback, please let me know.